Dealing with that all day. Rick, yeah. there were some big boomers that were happening all throughout the afternoon. Of course, the biggest focus, though, tracking Tropical Storm Elsa. I think that's where most of our minds are, but it's not yeah. here yet. We still have ways to go. Yeah, we do. This is about a thousand miles away still. And we'll get to local radar here uh, in just a second, too. Let's cover Elsa. We talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the newscast. It is a tropical storm, no longer a hurricane. Not to say that can't happen again, but it's going to have, uh, it's going to struggle to regain hurricane status. Uh, the system right now, not greatly organized. Okay, the low area the level of circulation, the center of this storm is here. As you go up into the the mid levels, it actually sags back to the southeast. You'd like to see it stacked up for a healthy storm. So this is a good thing because it's weakening the storm. Now it's 70 miles per hour. It becomes a hurricane at 74, by the way. There's the distance from Tampa, almost a thousand miles. Here's the cone from the National Hurricane Center at five o'clock this afternoon. This is what's interesting, okay? Tomorrow until Monday, what happens as it crosses Cuba? Mountainous area right here is really tough on tropical cyclones. So it could weaken even more or could stay about the same if it stays is about the same. It has a better chance of restrengthening or at least staying a menace as it pushes through the Gulf. Now look too. the cone doesn't show this line here extending into the Atlantic until it crosses the peninsula. So the National Hurricane Center really is thinking whatever's left is going to stay in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're probably going to have to contend with at least a heavy rainmaker, maybe some wind, maybe some storm surge issues too. Still too early to know though. So we just have to watch this system by Wednesday and Thursday. You see it moving uh, out into the Carolinas and eventually back into the Atlantic. And most of our spaghetti models are in pretty good agreement with the track of this likely being somewhere over here. There are the current uh, watches and mornings that are in effect, so watch this closely. Notice, too, right here, the Florida Keys already have a tropical storm watch because that is issued when they expect, and I'll get out of the screen for you here, a tropical storm or hurricane watch means they expect, or at least conditions are possible, I should say, within 48 hours. Now, if a warning is issued, that means tropical storm or hurricane conditions, whichever warning is issued, is expected within 38 hours. So one is possible within 40, one is expected within 36. I made that graphic just for Courtney. <laughs> It is. No, Courtney asked a great question about that. Now, when might we see tropical storm force winds here? That's 39 miles per hour or higher. And this is uh, showing Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Now, there's another method they could use. This is the most uh, reasonable time. There's also um, the most er the earliest time, and that would actually be Monday night at 8 p.m. So but going with this, we're going to say Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. So if that's true, that means most of Tampa Bay could see a tropical storm watch sometime tomorrow morning, but it could happen later on tonight as well. So definitely stay tuned. We'll keep you updated throughout the night and tomorrow as well. So here's what we know. Let's recap this. The storm doesn't have good organization right now. We need to watch it pass over Cuba tomorrow on Monday. Whatever's left on Monday will determine a lot for us. And here are the expected impacts right now. Notice still too early for high confidence in this forecast, but the worst weather is likely Tuesday, maybe late Tuesday could get into a little bit of Wednesday too. Tropical storm force winds could develop late Monday, probably more early on Tuesday. Remember, that's around 40 miles per hour sustained winds. That's not a certainty. Again, not high confidence in this yet. The big question is will be mainly is this mainly a heavy rain event for us or is it a wind rain and storm surge event? So again, we got to watch it across Cuba and see what's left. A quick look at downtown Tampa. You can see the bay there. Heavy clouds, some rain. There's a look at Clearwater Beach. We've had some raindrops out here as well. 81 degrees, the current temperature and uh, it's muggy outside. Here's radar. Look at that lightning and heavy rain in parts of eastern Hillsborough County right now and farther south down here. Look at Manatee County. Bradenton getting some heavy rain. We've seen some heavy rain push through Sarasota as well. As far as tomorrow goes for the 4th of July, let's talk about that as well. 90 tomorrow. Now that rain and storm chance you see there is mainly during the daytime. So by the time fireworks are scheduled tomorrow evening, I think almost everybody's dry in Tampa Bay. The best chance will be inland. So places like maybe Hardy, Polk, Highlands, DeSoto, you have a little better chance, but I like your odds as well. But I'm an optimist.